Welcome to the Migrate AWS Lambda to Azure Function Series. If you are looking to take an existing serverless function that you're hosting on AWS Lambda and migrate it to Azure Functions, this is the series for you. My name is Jeremy Lickness. I'm a cloud advocate with Microsoft. And in this series, we're going to explore a few things. The first thing we'll do is start with an existing Node.js AWS Lambda function. Then we'll migrate that code to Azure Functions and show you how it's done. Once the code is migrated, we'll review concepts as they relate to functions so you can understand how to navigate Azure resources and how those compare to AWS Lambda. We'll develop, test, and deploy from a local machine and finally, explore some advanced concepts such as security, monitoring, continuous integration, and deployment, or DevOps. Let's get started and explore our existing AWS Lambda function. You're looking at a very simple function to determine whether or not a number is a prime. It uses a brute force method after a few checks in the beginning. It essentially divides by every number from half of that number down to one or down to two and determines whether or not there's a remainder. Remember, a prime number is a number that's only evenly divisible by itself or the number one. So this is a brute force method. It's not optimized to find the prime. And we do that on purpose so we can demonstrate some features of functions. Now, this is not wired up as a serverless function yet. It's just a standalone function call. And I've exported it right here for node, use this module exports, so that I can test it out. I'm gonna open the command line, I'm gonna launch node, I'm going to load this file. Is it a prime.js? Now that's loaded and I can test it. Two is a prime, three is a prime, four should be false, five should be true, six should be false, seven should be true. Now let's try it with a larger number. And it quickly determines that's false. And let's try it with a very large prime. Now it's taking a little bit longer to iterate through, but eventually it comes back with the response of true. Now we've got a method where reasonably certain works. Let's implement it as an AWS Lambda function. This is our AWS Lambda setup. We have an API gateway that allows us to access it over the web. We have the Lambda function itself. We have logging, and we're gonna use DynamoDB for a simple cache. Some of those prime numbers took a long time to compute, and we wanna speed that up by caching them in the database. Let's take a look at the code as it's implemented. We set up the DynamoDB here. This is our main code. We export this handler that's going to handle the call coming in. Here you can see the prime function is imported exactly as is, as I showed it earlier. This is some boilerplate code that's generated when you create the Lambda function. And here's our main logic. What we're doing is we're looking for the query string or the body of that incoming request to see if there's a prime passed in. If there is a prime passed in, first thing we do is we try to grab it from our cache. If we're successful, we'll return the item, show whether or not it's a prime, and indicate that we grabbed it from the cache. Otherwise, we run the test to evaluate whether or not it's a prime, log that to the console, and then we load the value to our cache. We're putting the item into the cache. Finally, we return the result. Let's go ahead and test our function as it's implemented. I'm going to go into configure test events and just show you this existing is prime. You can see in the body I'm passing it a prime of 7 and then the rest is boilerplate that was provided for me by the test resource. If we look at is not prime, this one is passing 8 for the prime number. And then finally we have another test that checks with the query string. So here the body is empty but in the query string parameters we're passing that prime of 7. So now that we know what the tests look like we can run the is prime test that will run and give us a result and it succeeded and you can see the return was seven is prime true and it retrieved that from our cache let's try is not prime we'll test that and we get test eight is prime false and that was also in our cache and finally the query string we'll test that and again we get the expected result is prime of true 
I mentioned earlier that I'm using the API gateway so that we can access this over the web. If I click on the gateway, I get an endpoint that I can use to access the function. So I'm going to copy that link, drop to my command line, and access it directly. So we'll paste that link in, pass it a prime that we know, and you can see it came back and got the cache value of true. Let's go ahead and test it with a much larger prime number. This one we know will take some time to compute because the number is so large. And indeed we can see the time spent is increasing and it comes back and tells us that it computed that it's a prime and it's not cached. Now let's check to see how well our cache is working by requesting the same prime a second time. And we almost immediately get the result from our cache. Stay tuned because in the next video, we'll migrate this over to Azure, taking advantage of Azure Functions. In the meantime, you can follow the link below, aka.msawscompare, to take a look at how Azure services compare to AWS services. You can also access the source code for this project at the GitHub repo listed below.